Hello my friends, it's Roger once again at Mug Fossil University here with my uh, DNA reports and so forth, which uh, Harvard now is taking great interest in Mud Fossil DNA. So let's see what they have to say. Harvard and Max Planck Institute are working together trying to discover DNA and all the different creatures that were in our past. And I, uh, uh, that's very, very laudable. And I agree with that 100%. Now, they are searching mud and taking the DNA to, dis to determine what creatures were in these particular caves and so forth. Very, very good work. And I like this now. So what are they doing? Well, anyway, you can go up here, SOHP, Initiative for Science of Human Past at Harvard, bringing together, together everybody, scientists, humanists, everybody, come together. Let's find about our history. What was our real history? Because this is totally misunderstood. So the great idea, absolutely great idea. So what do we got here? It says, welcome to the Initiative for Science of Human Past at Harvard. The science of human past. Let's really look into this. Let's think about everything. Let's not miss anything this time. Because that's what happened last time. They laughed at everything. Missed everything. So, what do we got here? We are creating a supra, supra departmental cross-divisional inter-school network. Wow! That's fabulous. That means that they're going to be taking physics and science and chemistry and, and, and archaeology and all of the things that I have done, you know, at Mud Fossil University. We've been doing this for quite some time, so they're, they're, they're catching up. And, and they're going to have an inter-school network that brings historians, archaeologists together with other scholars, scientists to chart bold new answers to the age-old questions. What is history? Let me tell you something. I got 57,000 people that are researching this right now in Mud Fossil University because we're all equal. We're not professors teaching everybody what to read. We're actually doing the research on our own and, and cumulatively working through it. And we have come up with some serious answers. So um, this SOHP serves as a center for scholarly programming and scholarly programming and in, in innovative new courses and will network new research collaborations. I'm ready to collaborate, Harvard. I've tried to get a hold of them for, well, actually I did talk to them five, six years ago, and uh, they weren't inter interested then, and, uh, I have, and I did try to contact them many times since, and they still haven't been interested, but I think they're now coming along. So they're gonna co co new research collaboration. They're gonna collaborate with people this time. They're not gonna just say, go away across departments and disciplines, which, you know, Mudfossil University, we got chemistry, we got history, we got well, archaeology, we've got um, specimens, we've had CAT scans and the DNA, and uh, we're, we're about as disciplined as you can get. So they really hope to develop a certificate program where they, they, they can give you something to say you're smart or an undergraduate major or minor, as well as postgraduate degree programs that will attract students interested in redrawing the map of the human past with the tools of the 21st century and history. Yeah, we're, we're redrawing the map. You come to Mud Fossil University, we don't charge anything, and, and the map is, is, um, is pretty good. Let me show you the map. Okay, there's a new map, but let's see how really interested they are. I've sent this to Harvard and Max Planck. I've sent it to everybody. And this is a dragon in Morocco, and it is, um, it's a huge dragon, and it is this dragon throw, and I have dozens of videos on this, and um, I have been, you know, geology people have laughed about it, but it's true. It is a true, absolute factual thing. It cannot be dismissed, and that dragon is literally almost a thousand miles long. This is the decay and decomposition of a dead, rotting body. Any anatomist, any a coroner will fully understand that, and anybody that has a sense in their mind can see that. That's the rotting decay of flesh. And if you understand chemistry, which we do, at Mount Falls University, the red and the black is the vein and the artery blood. The vein blood being the black blood is blue in the bodies, and it's red, uh, black when it uh, oxidizes. The red turns rusty and, and, and dull red color, and it's more particulated than the black. Now, as we go through this gigantic 
dragon's body, which I'm sure they could check the DNA, It'd be very interesting. And at the very end over here is still where his tail is running out, way over here, still rotting away in the desert. So, and he, he runs almost over into the, um, into the Mediterranean. I mean, that I believe is the flute of the tail. It's a very interesting creature. And this has all been written about. Of course, he's attacking this gigantic fish. So, I would like to know what Harvard has to say about all this stuff. I'm willing to work with him. But I've been so disrespected over the years that I'm having a hard time finding it, you know, graceful to, to be to be graceful about this. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. And also, Harvard, I would like to have you un explain this runoff of the desert as Atlantis collapsed over here, which is the eye of the Sahara, and I have actually found the boats in the slips in the, I believe they call that the Lee section, as it cascaded the water all over. And these are the actual canals, and these little babies right here are the boat slips. And then they piled the stuff up here, they brought them over here and sent them out into the other rings. Now, I've done a lot of work on this. I understand this. I understand where the strait collapsed that they talked about, and it just happens to be right there. I would say that's a straight. Now, Plato said that the amount of mud that ran out was so much that they will never speak of mud again. So I think I just threw a couple of wrenches in the old monkey there, my friend. So if you could come along with um, some information to work with me, I'd like to, I, I got a couple last things to say, and then uh, I'm perfectly willing to work with anybody. I've done a lot of work here. So, if you think you way ahead of me, Harvard, I don't think so. Okay, last words. Harvard and Max Planck Institute, they love mud DNA. They are just in, thrilled with mud DNA now. So, does Mud Fossil University also love DNA? After our discovery of giant human beings, and I mean giant, hundreds of feet tall, DNA certified, with three ancient protocol DNA tests, which is proof accepted in any court of law. Now, they say they're bringing together all in a multidisciplinary region. I have a multidisciplinary region. of I could do chemistry, I do biology, I do anatomy, I do history, I do all of it, everything. The human health. I understand the transition metals that are required in the body. I don't think you do up there at your medical institution. Do you understand carboxylation and how carboxylation in the human body occurs because of transition metals and how they remove carbonic acids by turning them into carbonic gases? This I all understand from working with these right here because they show me the way. They show me actual proof. This was a... A DNA certified human lung right there. And if you show it to one of your medical students and he says that's not a lung, fail him. All right. Mud Fossil University has the DNAs, the CAT scans. We've had seven CAT scans. We have three DNA tests. We have the specimens. I recreated the preservation process. I understand how it works. I understand how these things became petrified in the first place. I've studied every ancient text almost, and they are not myths, my friend. So, here's what is the bottom line. If academics seek truth, they must first confront the dragon. All right, contact me. I could be respectful, but I have not had one lick of respect from anyone that claims expertise. Not one of them has challenged they all ignored and called me a fool. And now it's time to take your medicine. There's one last word to the wise about truth and scholarship. I know, and I would run this past your legal departments. I know they are extremely busy at this moment. But I would run this past them because I now believe that money is the prime motivator in academia and virtually all expertise-based areas, institutions, and so forth. 
So, how much truth is allowed in scholarship? Are the things I'm talking about allowed? I'm showing absolutely, there's no question what I have. Is peer review for non-members like me? Can I show things that they will look at? And then, Because if they're true, and they're not taking account to them, and they're telling a the student something that just isn't true, because they refuse to look at is that right? Should academics answer to students? Should they say to the student, well, I don't care about that stuff. I'm going to tell you what I read in a book. Somebody read it to me, so I'm going to read it to you. Is that right? I don't think so. Does fiduciary obligation apply to academics? Fiduciary obligation means that they're, they have to act in the best interest of a vulnerable party. I don't see anybody more vulnerable than a student. If they don't say exactly what the guy tells them, and, and they really have to adopt their philosophies in life. You can't go into there talking about Jesus and God and, and, and all these things, dragons and all that. They'd throw you out of there. You'd, you'd fail. They'd take your money and they'd send you off to live under a bridge. So I don't think that's right. They haven't paid attention for years. So I would pass this by your legal uh, um, departments because I, there is re, um, legal remedies for this. And, you know, I think changes are required. I'd get ahead of them, my friends. But if you want help, I am willing to help you. I am not rejecting anyone. I never have and I never will. All right? I just I want truth and reality. That's all I ever asked for. And I ask for a little assistance and I'm asking again.